not yet. Yeah, it's nice. And then when you do stop it, make sure it's at the beginning. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's time to get service. Let's stand and go before the Lord and ask Him to move in our midst this evening. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to worship you once again, to be in your presence, to reach out to you in sincerity and reality. important. 
and in our life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. Amen. amen. Um, I was um, I was thinking of something, and um, I was trying to figure out what I did with my glasses. I don't know where they are. Oh, you have them on. Huh? I said you have them on. And um, that for sure they're not in here anymore. I take them back. Get one more. Okay. Oh. I like them. Sure. And then I, I put them on with you or something. But um, I was thinking of something that we. Uh, go forward here. Uh, we're so thankful for God's faithfulness. We're thankful for all that God is doing in all of our lives. Uh, I was thinking about service today and just thinking about everybody that comes to church, how God just keeps bringing. Uh, it was good to see um, Mr. Cliff and his wife today and and God, and then last week we had enough, some, some other people that used to come to the church that came up and how God is just starting to put things together with new people, with fresh, uh, 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 with a fresh vision and all of these things. Thank you very much. And all of these things, how God is, uh, is orchestrating things and putting things together his way, in his way. And, um, and you know, we all have thoughts, don't we? We all have thoughts. We all have ideas. We all have uh, uh, suggestions. And all of those things are important in their rightful place. But uh, I also want to say something that I think um, will serve all of us well. Um, it's a beautiful thing to be able to pastor a church. It's a beautiful thing. For God to call you. You see, I wasn't just assigned here. God called me here. Sure. And, and along with that calling came the assignment. And then once God calls you to do something, it becomes an assignment. Doesn't it? Sure. Amen. So they are different. They are different. Sometimes people, I believe, are assigned places, but maybe it, 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 there's a question whether or not they might be called to do it. And, and a lot of times, um, um, it can be displayed in the attitude and all of this. But there's something that my, uh, I was told years ago. I'm trying to think if it was my mother. And um, it may have been my grandfather. And, uh, but someone of, 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 of old, that's older in nature uh, made the statement, find your place and get in. Right? Whatever your place is, find it. And you know, sometimes that's the job, isn't it? Just trying to find your place. Amen. And, uh, and I thank God for this help that I'm learning, that I'm growing, that I'm getting better. And so we're not here throwing stones at anyone. But, we, but what we all should be doing as people of God is finding our place. Amen. And uh, once we find our place, Get in. Amen. Get in there. Yes, and then once you get in that place, then do all the good that you can do. Yes. Notice I said do all the good that you can do. Because there's things that you can do that others can't do. That's why God put you there. That's why God places people in certain positions. That's why God calls people uh, to different ministries and different responsibilities. And all of these things. So always remember, find your place. And then once you find your place, get in it. And then once you get in your place, do all the good that you can do. Don't worry about what somebody else, you know, sometimes we get so preoccupied with what someone else is not doing. Or what somebody should be doing. Or uh, why is this person not doing this? Or why is this happening? The main thing is to find your place. And then once you find your place, get in it. And then once you get in it, then do all the good that you can do. And then I have found in my own personal life. Now I'm talking about me. I'm not talking about anyone else. I'm talking about me. I have found that in my work, 
and my labors and my responsibilities. If I stay in my lane, if I stay in the areas of responsibilities that God has given me, right? That God has given me. It keeps it it, it, it it helps me to drive safely. Mm -hmm. But if I try to go in somebody else's lane, amen. So what I'm saying is stay in your lane, drive in, in, in the responsibility that God has given you. Because when you get out of your lane, you get in another lane, and this, this is why accidents happen. This is why wrecks happen. This is why spiritual problems happen with people in churches and groups and all of that. Because instead of people just driving and focusing on what God's called them to do, they want to do something in this lane and do something over here in that lane. And, and what happens is when you don't stay in your lane, when you don't stay in your lane, it, it causes problems. And, and all and all in all. And so it's a blessing to work for God. Amen. But there's skill, uh, there, there's skill involved, there's prayer involved, there's dedication involved, there's commitment involved, amen. And it don't always involve worrying about what somebody else is doing. Yes, amen. It's about doing the will of God for your life. Amen. amen. And I thank God. That while I'm here in McKee's Rocks, I can't do Reverend Carr's work in Columbus. Mm -hmm. I can't do Reverend, uh, what's his name in Baltimore? Reverend Charles. Reverend Charles' work. Reverend Charles has to do his work in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. I can't do Reverend Whitlock's work in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Amen? And I can't do Reverend Pettis' work down in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. And I can't do Reverend DeBlanc's work in Columbus. Mm -hmm. I can't do Reverend Bill's work in Cincinnati. And, uh, and on and on and on, and, uh, and Reverend Samson up in uh, Detroit, and just, just you, I, you, you understand what I'm saying? My work and my responsibility, my lane, is for Jesus Christ. This is my lane. Amen. And I love the brethren, I love other people, I care about other people, but my work and my responsibility is to stay in my lane. Amen, because I have a destination that I got to reach. I, I have a goal that I need to reach. Amen? Yes, and uh, so we're so excited about the vision here. This vision, that's our vision. Amen? We're almost halfway there. God is blessing. Yes. Amen? How many of you are thankful Amen. for what God has been doing? Amen. What God's been doing? Thank you, Lord. Amen? Yes. Amen? We're looking forward to having 60 faithful people yes. by the end of the year. And, and, and I've been noticing on Sundays when, you know, God, is, we're consistently starting to, 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 to get a certain amount. God is moving Amen. and God is starting to bless our night services. we got to get our night services better. And then you say, well, why would you say something about it? Because it's what God wants. Mm -hmm. Amen. You have to assess what's going on and then believe God to make it better. Amen. Sure. And don't be afraid of a challenge. Amen. Don't be afraid of a challenge. So we're excited. We're thankful. We're, we're appreciative of God's goodness. Yes. Sir. Amen. And we're just we're, we're just so thrilled. And don't forget, this is a huge week. Oh. This is a huge week. Amen. We have Tuesday Bible study at the Star Wars. Uh, uh, home group one. Home group one. <laughs> Amen. Then home group one. Amen. We did home group two. Remember, Steve ought to be teaching. Amen. He ought to be really prayed up by now. Amen. <laughs> he been he been skipping skipping class, but he won't be skipping now. Amen. <laughs> Unless I know, and I know God knows. Amen. He knows I'm just teasing. He knows I'm just teasing. <laughs> he been skipping. It just seems like every time. When he's supposed to do class, something keeps coming up. But we, I'm having a good time, brother. But I'm still skipping school. But anyway, <laughs> uh, really, he's too, he, he's too cool for school. But, um, but really, Reverend Steele, uh, it's not that he has not wanted to teach. It's just that every time we're supposed to do the home group there, something uh, has prevented him from doing that. So, but God is faithful. God, God really is faithful. And unless 
something comes up that we're not aware of, we will be having home group this Tuesday at uh, 7 o'clock at the Stallworths. Amen. It's just down the street. And the apartment is down. Remember what's the name of the apartment again? Wilson School Apartments. All right? Wilson School Apartments. I'll put, send out all the information to everyone, put it out on social media, and all of those different things. We want God to grow. We, we want it to grow. Yes, sir. Amen. And, um, and, and, and you never know what God can do. Brother David is sitting here because of the home group. Thank God. Amen. By the grace of God. It's the truth. Amen. Amen. And Miss Angie was here this morning yes. because of the home group. It's Amen. Right. So, so it matters. Oh. It matters. Amen. And we're just so thankful for what God is doing in the other one, too. And then on Wednesday night, we have a regular worship service, a recharge service. We want, we want uh, the people to come. God's been blessing the Sunday our uh, Wednesday night services. They're picking up, they're improving, they're getting better. Amen. I'm excited about it. Amen. And then Thursday is a huge day because we'll be preparing. Uh, we'll be doing a lot of uh, preparation for the fellowship meeting coming up. Uh, we got a huge weekend of, of fellowship, church services, and uh, a lot of the different churches will be coming in. And we'll have big fellowship on uh, uh, Friday night at 7 30. Um, uh, we hope everybody can get in and participate with that, help pitch in, and to, to get food, to provide food. And then there'll be uh, people who have already been designated to help serve and participate in that. And then 1 o'clock Saturday is the actual uh, fellowship meeting service. 1 o'clock Saturday. We'll be, uh, Pastor Devonshire will be preaching. Mm -hmm. Amen. We appreciate Reverend Devonshire. Yes, um, he's the regional overseer. He also pastors, uh, the senior pastor in St. Louis. And uh, so uh, we were just there uh, at the conference. We had fellowship. We, we went over that fellowship uh, Friday evening at the conference. That was a blessing. Yes, and uh, so, and then once uh, that's done, Sunday morning, uh, Pastor De De Devishai will be preaching for us here on uh, Sunday morning, and then that Sunday night, he'll be traveling to uh, Columbus. Columbus to preach at Reverend Parks in Columbus. So, it's busy. Mm -hmm. It's busy. So, we need everybody to get in, get involved, uh, uh, get, get in here, amen, be a part, participate, help do something, help, help you know, uh, lend a helping hand, Pray, yes. give, Amen. support, and, 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 and provide your time and energy to God. Yes. To God. Amen. All right? And uh, because there's so much work needs to be done. Amen. Amen. Lots of work needs to be done. So we are very thankful. And um, I'm not going to be very long tonight. And um, this... Uh, Boy, you name it. Everything that could go wrong this morning went wrong. But you know what? God still got the glory. Amen. Be God still got the glory. And um, <laughs> so we're excited and yes, we're thankful sir. and everything. And uh, once again, I want to ask everyone to remember Rosalind. Rosalind just stay right down the street here. Rosalind Copeland and her family. Their baby sister was uh, uh, tragically killed, or whatever the case may be. Things are under investigation. And uh, so just pray for her, pray for their family, and uh, that God will be with them during this time of difficulty. Amen. And uh, hopefully, um, I may be in touch to find out maybe we can uh, bless them with some food or something. Uh, I'll find out to see if we can, we can, you know, bless them. Uh, sometimes you might not be able to do a lot of things, but at least you can take some food by. And uh, these are the kind of things that people do yeah. to help lessen the burden because they got people coming in and out of the house. Yes, Amen. Right. And there's, there's food for people to eat, and they don't have to worry about providing anything. Yes, right. and, uh, and I just believe that even though she doesn't come here actively, she still considers me her pastor. 
Yeah. And so we just go do what God wants us to do. And, and, and we're not going to worry about all that kind of stuff. Yes, and we just going to be, we're going to show Christian love. Amen. Amen. We're going to show brother, we're going to show brotherly love uh, uh, to her and, uh, and her family in the hour and the time of need. Yes, Amen. Amen. Because I would want somebody to do the same for me. Yes, Amen. 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 And uh, so, but anyway, I'd like to minister to you from the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew chapter 17, I, I, I don't plan on preaching a long. I hope those of you that were in service this morning, uh, if you did not hear the message, thank you for, I appreciate those that are joining us online, or those that will watch the service at a later date, uh, at a later time. Um, I would like to encourage you to go back and watch the service. Uh, my wife, was able to speak, and she was able to share some good things, and we've already got some good positive feedback on that, amen, and then I want you to be able to hear the message, too, about the Shunammite woman in the, in the book of Kings. It was an absolute blessing, amen, how she was called a great woman. God called, she was called in the word of God a great woman, and uh, so and uh, how, how do you become a great woman? By being dedicated to God. Amen. Being dedicated to God. All right? And that's how. She was dedicated. She took care of the man of God. She fed the man of God. And when it came, and when it came down to it, when God blessed her with a son because of her faithfulness, and then her son died, and then God, she reached out to the man of God, and God raised him up. And all of that, why? Because she was a great woman. Yeah. Because she was a great woman. Yeah. And, and even when her son was, was dead, and she met the man of God, the man of God said, it is well. She said, it is well. Mm -hmm. uh, even in her grief, in her bereavement, yes. in her sorrow, no doubt, she, she still declared, it is well. Amen. And you know, Amen. in the middle of our battles, in the middle of our difficulties, in the middle of misunderstandings, sometimes things happen to us tragically. Sometimes we have atrocities happening in our life. We still have to be able to look up to God with a heart full of sorrow. Sometimes you may have a broken heart from a relationship, from a marriage, from um, your children. Because sometimes your children, when they're little, they walk on your lap. And when they get old, they walk on your heart. Amen. And, and on and on and on. We have so many things happen to us in life. We have to still be able to say, it is well. Yes. It is well. God, my dad is laying there in that casket. Yes. But it is well. Yes. Amen. My yes. mom is gone, but it is well. Yes. Amen. I lost my job, but it is well. Yes. Amen. And on and on and on and on. With God, no matter what the issue is, it is with Him. It's when you're disconnected. When you're disconnected from God, it is not with Him. Amen? All right. So much for that. That's a blessing. That thing is worth going back to read over and meditate on it. I think it's uh, second, second Kings chapter 4, I think it is. Mm -hmm. Just the whole chapter is just an absolute, absolute uh, masterpiece. And that it's a biblical masterpiece. It really is of God's faithfulness and women who serve God. Because I believe it's also got in the first part of that chapter about the woman that God kept the oil, the pots of oil and all of that. And so it's just a it's just an absolute masterpiece of God. But anyway, Matthew chapter 17, I don't know, is it just me or does it feel money? It feels money to me. And um, it's a little sticky. But I'm glad I'm not going to complain. It's been a little bit of a long winter. And then when it wasn't extremely cold, we got too much rain. It, it was just, it's been kind of a, the weather pattern has been somewhat weird.
chapter 17, verse 14. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him. Kneeling down to him said, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic. And so vexed, he was having mental issues. Uh, almost akin to somebody that looked like they're demon possessed. You know how people are seemingly out of their minds? And we've met people like that. It's like you, you look at them and you can look into their eyes and tell something is wrong. Something is wrong. And uh, for oftentimes, he fallen into the fire and off into the water. That's amazing. He fell in the fire, but he also fell in the water. He had, to, like, he had enough sense that know that once he went in the fire, the water would put the fire out. You know what I'm saying? It's amazing, isn't it? It really is. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. I brought them to your, I brought them to your disciples, and they could not cure him. So you put Jesus on the spot, right? <laughs> you're saying that you trained them. They're your, they're, they're your pupils. They're your, the, the disciple is what? A disciplined one. So they're, they're under your wing, Jesus. They're walking with you. You're training them. You're teaching them. You're instructing them. Your disciples could not Cure him. Amen? I don't want Jesus to be put on the spot because of my back. Yes, sir. Huh? Amen. Because I know the blood works. Yeah. I know the cross works. I know the spirit of God is real. And if I display something to people that brings shame to God, You have to be careful about how you go about your spiritual business. You have to be careful telling people that you're saved and then not live right in front of them. Hello? Yes, Because once you tell people you go to church, once you tell people you're a Christian, once you tell people you're saved, they might not say anything to you, but they're watching. They're watching. The observe It's a fact. It is a fact. They might never say anything to you, but let you do something wrong. All of a sudden, they pipe up. <laughs> I've been in situations like that. I'm sure Reverend Steele's been in situations like that. And I'm not saying you didn't do anything wrong, but if they feel like it's something where they can put God on the spot, they're going to pipe up. But let somebody say something to them about their adultery or their fornication or them doing wrong, and then they, they want to go off on you. It's just incredible. They expect you to take criticism when they can't take criticism. But anyway, these people said, Lord, you know, your disciples, you know, these are your people. Right? <laughs> they could not cure you. Then Jesus answered and said, Oh, faithless, and perverse generation. Not only do you not have faith, you're perverse. You know perverse, the word perversion is a bad word. When you call somebody perverted or perverse, usually that means it's evil and demented and negative in nature. Am I, am I right about it? Perverted or perversion it's usually people that get involved in things that's way beyond the pale. They, they, they usually get involved in things that's beyond what's normal. Amen? And so Jesus will say the fact that you are not, the fact that you don't have faith, the fact that you don't have faith is perverse to me. Amen? It's perverse to me. Amen? And perverse generation. I dare you to to not have faith in God. Uh, the nerve of you. After all that 
Jesus have done. Think about it. Think about the cross. Think about the blood. Think about the beating that Jesus took. Think about the cat of nine tails. Think about the cross. Think about how they buried him in somebody else's tomb and how he rose again on the third day. And I dare you not believe God. I dare you not believe the fact that God can heal the sick. I dare you to believe uh, that God uh, cannot raise the dead. I, I dare you to not believe uh, that God is, is able tonight. I, I say God is able. Uh, God is alive. Uh, God can meet the need. Uh, it's perverse to God uh, when people don't have faith. Yes, sir. Old faithless and perverse generation. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Not worth put up with you or allow you. How long will I tolerate you not having faith? Brothers and sisters, I want to preach to you tonight about activating your faith. Amen. Activating. We need to just we need to stop talking about God. We need to start stepping out. Uh, we did. Jesus said, it's perverse to me. It's a, it's, he said, you faithless and perverted. It's perverted to God the fact that we wouldn't even trust him to heal us. That he would not trust him, to, that we wouldn't trust him to provide for us. That you mean to tell me that you don't believe God can save your daughter? You don't believe God can save your son? You don't believe God can save your son? Your daughter in law, you don't believe God can save your neighbor, you don't believe God can save teenagers, you don't believe God can save moms and dads, you don't believe. He said, Oh, faithless and perverted generation, we have a group of people that go to church all the time, but we don't believe God because we put up with not having, we put up with sickness. We put up uh, with our life it, uh, turned upside down. Uh, it's time uh, to start believing God. Uh, you just gotta step out uh, and activate your faith uh, and say, God, uh, I know uh, that you have the power. Uh, I know uh, you can meet the need. Amen. Slip your hands up and worship God. Oh, hallelujah. Activate your faith tonight.
But then, and then we have the faith chapter, right? Uh, or we also call it God's Hall of Fame. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things what? Not seen. Now, God, I don't see it with my naked eyes, but I know it's there. God, I can't see my child at this particular moment serving God, but I know by faith they are. God, my job situation may not be right now what it ought to be, but by faith I know it's going to turn. I know it's going to get better. Already done. 
I'm going to act as if it's already accomplished. I'm going to act. I'm going to pray about it, and then I'm going to walk in it by faith. I'm going to believe it by faith. And I'm going to say, I've already asked God to work this out. I'm going to live my life as if it's already done. I'm going to work it. I'm going to act as if it's already done. I'm going to just trust that God's already accomplished it. The Bible tells us that when you have a need to come boldly to the throne of grace, that you might receive help in a time of what? Need. I'm telling you, get your faith activated. We need to quit doubting God. We need to quit doubting the Word of God. We need to quit doubting the Spirit of God. We need to trust that God will answer prayer. I'm going to keep coming to the night services and no one else shows up. Yes, sir. Amen. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep believing in God. Yes. I'm going to keep my nose in the book. My wife and I, we're going to keep going into the community every week. Just thirsty. We walk through the manor. We walk through the manor talking to people. And then a week or so before that, we walk through the matter, talking to people. And then this girl's sister gets killed the next day. Or the, I think it was the next day. Her sister gets killed. I'm telling you, God is concerned. God is burning for the souls of men and women. And you see, God, we got to You say, well, why would you go down there? It's dangerous. Yes, it's dangerous. But, it, but you have to have faith in God. You have to trust God uh, that God's going to help you uh, to help others. Yes. Stand with me, man. Get your faith activated. God, tonight I need my faith activated. I need to know, God, that I trust you. God, I need to know that I depend 